All righty. Welcome everyone to the Edison Township High School College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, but you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check the schedule on the website. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Edison. And I'm very excited now to turn it over to our first presenter, and that's going to be the University of Vermont. Hi, everybody. My name is Candace Duckworth. I'm the Regional Associate Director of um, Admissions for the University of Vermont. Uh, thank you for all joining us here today. I'm glad uh, we can talk a little bit about UVM. Um, I always like to describe UVM as kind of having the best of both worlds. I think that's kind of contradictory on the surface, though. Um, UVM is old. We were founded in 1791, so we're actually the fifth oldest college in New England, but UVM is constantly renewing its programs as well as its facilities to keep pace with the changing world around us. And we are a medium-sized school, so that we're right around 10,000 undergraduate students is both big and small. I think it's definitely big compared to many other liberal arts colleges, but it's smaller than other national research universities. So you get kind of the breadth of opportunities of a large school, but you get the sense of community of a smaller school. And then we are located in beautiful Burlington, Vermont, which is both kind of an urban and an open location. You have um, Burlington, which is a small city known for great food, music, and other arts, but also business and technology um, innovation. And then you've got the Adirondack Mountains and the Green Mountains and Lake Champlain all right there in your backyard. Again, um, about 10,000 undergraduate students, you might notice that um, that number is a little unusual though, that breakdown for in-state and out-of-state students. Uh, about 73% of our students do come from out of state, but Vermont's a small state, so that kind of makes sense. We do offer over 100 different majors, and we're organized into seven different schools and colleges. So you can kind of see the, the whole range that you have to, um, to choose from there. We do also have undecided, which is probably our most popular major for the application, and you can apply as undecided to each of those with the exception of business and nursing. Another great distinction of UVM is definitely our faculty members. Professors at UVM are world-class scientists and scholars, and they're really driving to be making new discoveries in their field, but they also love to teach, and at UVM, they get to do both. We have a 16 to 1 student-faculty ratio and an average class size of right around 33, so you'll really get to make close connections with your professors in all of your classes. Another hallmark of UVM is that we are a land-grant university. And land-grant universities are dedicated to education that improves the health of our societies. And kind of guided by that mission, you'll find a really strong sense of purpose in our classes and our laboratories and clubs and really kind of every aspect of life at UVM. We have 92% of our students participating in these experiences, things like um, internships, research, service learning, and study abroad, uh, where you can take knowledge that you're learning in the classroom and put it into practice and make it come to life. And students find these opportunities through our career center, the professors, or their academic advisors. We have some amazing facility, facilities right in our backyard for you as well, including the University of Vermont Medical Center and our Learner College of Medicine and a lot of great environmental field studies as well. The residential experience, you know, where you're living on campus can be a really big part of your college life, especially in that first year. We do require students to live on campus for at least two years, and we have everyone organized into different learning communities. You can see the list of topics here. Um, I think this is great because you get to choose on your housing application, which you're most interested in. So it doesn't necessarily have to be related to your major, but it allows you to make connections with students um, who you know you have something in common with kind of right away. Our UVM community is also dedicated to supporting and celebrating the unique identities of every student, faculty, and staff member. One of the most important things that we have, um, I think, in our community is what we call our common ground, and that is um, our commitment to promoting the list of values that you see here. And we have everyone, um, when new students arrive on campus, you sign a pledge to uphold these values at a candlelight ceremony on the University Green. That's one of our favorite traditions on campus. Our community also values diversity, equity, and inclusion in all aspects of campus life, from our identity centers, general education requirements to our clubs and organizations, these values will be reflected throughout your entire college experience. 
we get a little bit more about Burlington because Burlington would not be the same without UVM and UVM would not be the same without Burlington. Um, it's all just an easy walk from campus to be right downtown or right at the lakefront, but it's companies um, here like Burton, Ben & Jerry's, Dealer.com, Great Mountain Coffee. So there's really this kind of innovative spirit in Burlington. It's also pretty artsy. It's got great arts and music scene. Um, amazing restaurants. That's always my favorite part. Um, and it's really accessible and easy to get to and from Burlington as well. Um, so I think it's true that where we are shapes who we are and how we learn. Um, so just, you know, from the mountains to the lake and kind of everywhere in between, our students are getting out there and doing all of these experiences hands on. Um, but you don't necessarily have to study the environment to be out there doing all of that. You can certainly just kind of walk around, take a look in your environment and, and you have an appreciation for it. And then just a little bit about our admissions profile. We use what's called a holistic process, which means we're evaluating you as a whole student. We're going to take into consideration all those different pieces of your application, like your transcript and letters of recommendation, your activities or your resume, your essay, or maybe an optional essay. Um, we do offer um, the common application or the coalition application. We have a November 1st deadline for early action. And new next year will be early decision. So that is the binding one. And then we also have January 15th as our regular decision deadline. We will continue to be test optional for students applying for fall of 2023. But anyone applying after that, stick around. Uh, we'll have that update for you shortly, hopefully. And your admissions application is also good for an, um, admission to the Honors College. So we'll go ahead and evaluate every student for that, as well as for merit scholarship. And 89% of our students are receiving some sort of scholarship and financial aid whether you're in-state, out-of-state, transfer, international, whatever it might be, we really try to invest in our students. So thank you all for taking the time to learn a little bit more about the University of Vermont tonight. I'll go ahead and put my contact information in the chat. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks and have a great night. Wonderful, thank you so much. Next up, we have the University of Rhode Island. Hi, thanks. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, let me just share my screen real quick. And awesome. So you should see a beautiful shot of our campus right there. Um, so I'm not only uh, an admission rep for the University of Rhode Island, but I'm specifically your admission counselor uh, here at URI. So when you apply, you'll be working with me uh, and we'll get you through the process. No problem. Um, I'm originally from Union County, New Jersey. So a little bit uh, in common, uh, you know, not too far from where you guys are. And I remember just, you know, spending countless hours at Menlo Park and Woodbridge Mall, you know, just shopping and hanging out with friends. So I'm sure many of you can relate. Um, so it just seems like yesterday that I was going through all the same questions and uh, curiosities uh, that you all that you all are doing uh, right now. So, um, you know, no question left unturned, ask away. We have some great uh, panelists here for you um, to hopefully help you through this process. All right, so let me tell you a little bit more about U, uh, URI. Um, we're a medium-sized uh, institution. We are the state university here in Rhode Island uh, with just over 14,000 undergrads. We're expecting an incoming freshman class of about 3,300 students. We're located in a very scenic part of Rhode Island uh, here in the Southern coast, 15 minutes away from four gorgeous beaches. Uh, and like uh, University of Vermont, we also have a very unique in-state, out-of-state uh, percentage we're almost 50-50, or we are actually almost, we are 50-50 when it comes to our in-state, out-of-state breakdown. Uh, we are the smallest state in the country. Um, and I think, you know, maybe because we're a little bit more, uh, you know, in the middle of New York and Boston, uh, we tend to get a little bit even of a split. Um, but it's certainly a great dynamic here at the university. Um, and it's, it's just a great uh, place to meet people, you know, from near and far away. Um, I couldn't resist but putting up a beach shot can you tell I can't wait for the warmer weather? Um, we were voted one of the best uh, beautiful coastal campuses in the US uh, recently. So come check us out. This is only 10 minutes away, Narragansett Beach. Um, we always refer to them as our beaches, but they're not our beaches. We don't own them, uh, but certainly it's something that we uh, take pride in. Uh, academically speaking, we have over 100 majors, 160 minors that you can choose from, uh, everything from studio art, foreign language, nursing, pharmacy, engineering, business, education, uh, environmental science, uh, you know, you name it, we probably have it. Uh, and you can explore different things. If you have something in mind, great. We encourage you to apply for that. Um, while I'm speaking of that, nursing, pharmacy, and engineering, you must apply for those majors. Um, all the other majors we have, you can certainly explore, 
decide later on if you want to join uh, and study that major or change your mind and move out of that major and declare something else. But with nursing, pharmacy, and engineering, those three fields are a little bit more space uh, limiting. So we do ask that you uh, apply directly into those programs. Uh, we also allow students to be undecided when they come in. We don't expect the 17, 18 year old coming out of high school to know exactly what you want to do in life, right? So we truly believe in that college is a time for exploration, uh, exploration within academics, social exploration. Um, so we definitely want to encourage you to do that, all of that uh, and then some, so you don't lock yourself into anything uh, without actually having um, a good sense of what you're getting into. Um, in addition to great academics, obviously, you're looking for a college that's going to challenge you to grow beyond the classroom, you know, beyond the textbooks and the exams. So URI offers just a variety of different internship and experiential learning opportunities. Studying abroad is starting up again. Obviously, the last couple of years has put a halt to that, uh, but we are certainly uh, working hard to get a lot of our study abroad programs back online. Obviously, a lot of it is predicated on travel uh, restrictions and things like that, but Things are opening up, so that's a good sign. Um, you're going to have the ability to work alongside your faculty and doing research, uh, developing your own leadership skills, uh, getting involved in our honors program, which certainly would help boost to your resume if you wanted to go on uh, for grad school, uh, whether it be here or elsewhere. Uh, and 95% 90 90 of URI grads uh, do enter the workforce or are going to grad school within six months of graduation. So we're very proud of that aspect of, of uh, where our students go. Um, another dynamic feature about URI is our housing situation. Um, as Candace said, at the University of Vermont, they offer le living and learning communities. Well, we here at URI offer the same as well. Um, we group students within similar majors or similar areas of study so that you have support services and uh, the ability to work with your classmates closely. Uh, but they're just regular res uh, dorms, though. I always impress on students, you know, just because you're grouped with people that you uh, have academic common common trends with doesn't mean that you have to only hang out with those people. It just makes life academically a little easier, but you can come and go as you please and you'll certainly make friends across campus uh, no matter where you live. 95% uh, of our first and second year students do live here on campus, even though we have the beaches 10 minutes, you know, 10, 15 minutes away. Um, so you have plenty of opportunities to grow on campus as well as off campus. Uh, you get to decide what you wanna do. We actually don't have any requirements for students to live on campus. Um, so, but typically first and second year students do. Uh, we have a lot of great roadie pride, which is what we call our school spirit here at URI. And that can be felt on and off campus, whether it's through our, through one of our 300 clubs or organizations, our division one sporting events, Greek life, intramurals, uh, theater and musical, you know, productions, anything you can think of, we have, we have the second largest indoor arena here in Rhode Island, right on our campus, the Ryan center. This is a picture of it during a basketball game. Um, you know, so we truly believe that URI is what you make of it, uh, and there's no other way we'd have it. Um, so you definitely have a similar application process here to many schools through the common application. Deadlines are uh, right there. December 1 is our early action priority scholarship deadline. Same thing as UVM. You get to uh, be considered for all scholarships uh, and uh, an honors program. And need-based financial aid is offered here at URI as well. So my time is up. I will go ahead and put my contact information in the contact box, and I'll be here to answer questions a little later. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, next up we have Rowan University. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jasmine Arce. I'm one of the admissions counselors for Rowan University. So I'm just going to pull up the presentation and get started. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see. Um, so Rowan University is located in South Jersey. We do have multiple campuses as well, um, but we are a South Jersey school. Um, our main campus is Glass. Can you guys hear me now? I think I might have. Yes. You went out for yeah. just a second. Yeah, I think so. I think something happened, but nonetheless, I'm back. Okay, so as I had mentioned, um, our main campus is in Glassboro. We are in a great location. We're close to a bunch of um, 
cities and states, Philadelphia being one of them. Um, so if you did want to hang out in Philly, see what kind of events they're hosting, any internships, jobs, we have a career services center that will work with you um, to figure out what's in the area. And then um, we do have a shuttle that can take students to and from Philadelphia for free. Um, our other, low camp or our other uh, locations for, for the campus are in Camden, New Jersey. Um, that's more of our urban campus. Glassboro is more suburban. Glassboro has our um, housing. Our West Campus houses our tech park. So if you are interested in anything technology related, um, you're definitely gonna wanna check out the tech park. And of course our shuttle goes to all of our different locations. Um, so you don't have to worry about parking or, or traffic or anything like that. We can take you to and from. We are associated with two medical schools. We will have three. Um, hopefully by 2025, the new vet school will be up and running. Um, but we have two med schools. Um, one is our MD program with Cooper Hospital in Camden. And then we also have our uh, DO program with the School of Osteopathic Medicine in Stratford. Um, so if you are interested in medicine, um, these are gonna be fantastic resources. As I mentioned, we are building a vet school. So we're actually gonna be um, the first university in New Jersey to have a vet school. I believe we're one out of three in, uh, universities in the country that has the three med schools. Um, but if you are interested to become a vet, um, we are gonna have a pathway as well from vet technician to um, vet medicine. So definitely new innovations always happening on campus. Um, we do also own a planetarium that's on the Glassboro campus, and we have a fossil park, which isn't located on the campus, but it's not um, far. We do have a shuttle that takes students as well. So if you ever want to study anything earth and environmental um, studies or astronomy, these are going to be great resources. And all of these um, buildings and access points are included in your tuition. So if you did want to take classes at other campuses, um, just fit in into your schedule and then you can take classes and experience what all the other uh, campuses have to offer. We do have over 80 undergraduate degrees. Um, so some of the more popular ones that we have are like the College of Business. We did just open up um, last fall a new coffee shop that's entirely ran by students. Um, so you kind of get that feel of what it's like to um, run a business. We also have the College of Engineering. So if you are inter interested in anything engineering related, we're number 19 in the country for the best engineering programs. Um, Education is also super popular with us. We started off as a teaching school way before we were Rowan. Um, in 1923, we were a teaching school. Um, so our program is fantastic. And then of course we have medical programs, we have performing arts, um, we do have some online, like completely online degrees if you're interested. Um, so if you do want to uh, study at Rowan and there's a major you're interested in, but you're not sure if we have it, definitely reach out to our admissions department and we'll be happy to um, help you out. So I'm gonna, um, I'm not gonna highlight the entire profile, but I do like to add that our class size is um, roughly about 20 students. The ratio is 17 to one. So the most I've seen in our class is maybe about 25 students. Um, we'd like to keep it pretty small so that students have that one-on-one -on -one connection with the professor. Um, so there's no huge lecture halls here at Rowan. There's no classes of 100. We do study abroad. Um, hopefully next year it will be open, um, but we go to 40, to 40 to 41 different countries. So depending on what we have available, we'll have, we're more than happy to, to help you set that into your schedule. Um, we do have other admissions pathways if you want to um, pursue any degrees that are shorter than the typical like four or five it would take. We have online degrees. Um, we have other academic success programs. So there's definitely different ways to create a customizable degree with Rowan um, and, and get your like certificates if you want. So definitely tons of ways to um, get a degree with us. We are on the Common App for um, any freshman students. If you decide you wanna to go to community college first, transfer over, that's perfectly fine. Um, but we do take the Common App and we have our own application if you wanted to just do ours. We are a test optional school. We are gonna remain test optional forever. Um, so if you don't wanna submit any scores, it's not gonna affect your decision to get in or your um, ability to earn scholarships. Our scholarships range from 1,000 to 10,000 and they are renewable every year. 
Um, so I'm gonna skip a little bit, but uh, the, the in-state tuition for students is 14,376. Um, that will be factored in um, half for fall and half for spring. We have various different rooms on campus that are priced differently, different meal plans. So we're definitely ha happy and willing to work with you to figure out what's affordable. Um, we do have other scholarships as well. So if you are interested in anything, um, any additional scholarships, we can definitely try and stack a couple things on for you. We have tons of different activities, Greek life. We are a D3 school. So if you wanna play varsity sports, tons of places to eat. We have Rowan Boulevard. So definitely make sure you get involved. You have a good time on campus. You eat a ton. Um, and if you haven't been able to visit the campus, we are definitely gonna be open this Sunday, March 6th is our open house, our very first one for spring. Um, so if you wanna register, I'll put the link in the chat and also my contact. Um, so thank you and have awesome. a good night. Thank you so much. Okay, next up we have Montclair State University. Hi everyone. My name is Anisha. I'm the admissions counselor from Montclair. I'm just gonna share my screen real fast. Okay. Alrighty, so Montclair State University is located, of course, in Montclair, New Jersey. We have a very large campus, over 21,000 students, but what's great is our classes tend to be smaller, usually like 25 students per class, which is great because you get that one-on-one -on -one attention from your professor. Um, our school is very well known for being a huge arts school. We have amazing theater arts programs. We're also a very popular school for um, Hispanic students. We are military friendly, as well as being um, one of the, sorry, <laughs> The computer's glitching a little bit, having a great nationwide uh, dance program. I'm just going to skip through. So, okay. We have over 300 different majors, minors, and concentrations to choose from. I know that's a lot. So I always recommend students, you know, check our website out, see what pops out of you. This just lists out a couple of our most popular majors. Our top five are here. Then you'll find more popular majors here. We're very well known for our teaching programs. Um, every year, we get a lot of great students coming in wanting to teach. We do also have some unique and very you know, competitive programs like nursing, musical theater, dance, um, product design. So there's a lot to choose from. Another great thing we offer is a combined program, which is a four plus one, where certain majors, you can actually go in and, you know, get your bachelor's in your first four years. And then the fifth year, you're getting a master's. This saves a lot of time and money because typically a master's can take about, you know, two years to get. We also have a four plus one MBA program. So what that is, is it's similar where you get your, you know, bachelor's first and then your fifth year, you're getting an MBA. And if you're interested in going into the corporate world, having that MBA really does make you stand out. And you don't have to be a business major to be in this MBA program. These majors here work as well. So if you're interested in psych, but you want to go into business as well, that works too. We also have undeclared, which is extremely popular. What makes our program stand out is we have different tracks we can put you in. So say you know you want to work with kids, but you're not sure if you want to be like a teacher or social worker, child psychologist. We have an education service and society track, which is great because you get to dip your toes in classes and see what would work best for you, which is better than going full force into a major and then realizing years in that you want to switch out. There's a lot of different activities as well. Montclair is actually only 12 miles away from New York City and we have a train station on campus. So if you'd wanna go into New York, that's great. We have an amazing, um, very safe residential area around the campus and it's very cute. I like to call it Hallmark Town nearby with lots of local businesses and nice restaurants. We have Greek life as well as D3 sports and a lot of rec sports. Rec volleyball seems to be very popular. There's also an ice rink on campus as well as all types of clubs. You can find clubs based on, you know, hobbies, major, um, you know, cultural clubs. Study abroad is also really popular at Montclair. Um, when it comes to applying, you can apply either through, you know, Common App or our website. Either one works fine. We don't have a preference. Um, the application is pretty simple. You know, your transcript, essay, app fee. And if anyone wants me to delve deeper into any of this, I will be leaving my contact info in the um, chat. So when it comes to students who apply to Montclair, typically we look for around like a 3.2 GPA, 3.0, and we are SAT, um, ACT optional. And I'll just skip through the deadlines. 
We are also a Garden State Guarantee School. So what that means is if you do come to Montclair your third or fourth year, you do get um, a certain type of grant based on the income that your parents make. So this is something I would definitely recommend looking into. Um, you really want to go into college and try to come out with as little debt as possible. Um, we do have a lot of events coming up. There's Accepted Students Day. We have in-person tours. There's virtual tours as well if you prefer, you know, just doing that virtually. We do also have different webinars we host on like finding financial aid, residence life, as well as, you know, like admissions. And we just do this presentation, but in a lot more detail. So thank you so much for having me. I'm going to, like I said, put my information in the chat. And if you guys think of any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you so much. All right, next up we have the University of Connecticut. All right, thank you so much, Chelsea. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. So my name is Dan Teague. I am the admission officer for New Jersey for the University of Connecticut. Let me just share my screen here. All right, let me just switch that. Um, everybody can hopefully see the screen now. All right. That's great. Thank you so much. All right. So we'll hop right in. So UConn is the flagship state university in Connecticut. Um, we were founded in 1881. We're also a top 25 public university um, for research one classification as well. So lots of opportunities for research on our campus um, with around 24,000 students across all of our campuses. Um, and then five campuses across the state. We do also have a law program and then also on health kind of network throughout the state as well. Um, we're also the only land, space, and sea grant institution in the state of Connecticut. But this gives you an idea of where all of our campuses are located. Stores is the main campus. We have about 14,000 students living there. Um, and then UConn Stanford is the only other campus that offers housing. But this gives you a good idea of where we're located in New England. Definitely not too far from New Jersey. Um, very close to a lot of large metropolitan areas. Um, and that gives you an idea of kind of where and a little bit about where our students are coming from. So we do definitely support a very diverse student body at the University of Connecticut. Um, our students come from 42 out of the 50 states in the country, um, and that represents about a quarter of the student body. And then our international population is right around 15%, and that um, students come from 90 plus different countries across the uh, world. So again, very diverse student body at the University of Connecticut. And a little bit about activities, um, more so community service and job opportunities. Uh, so our students definitely have opportunities to work with some of the largest companies in the state. Some of those being United Technologies, Pratt & Whitney, um, Synchrony, Stanley Black & Decker, Aetna, Cigna, um, Deloitte, Travelers, and then many others. So there definitely are a lot of opportunities for students to get internships with those companies and then secure um, you know, employment thereafter. Obviously, community service is a huge thing to the university, as you can see with that number. And then we do also have a lot of opportunities for experiential global learning, um, doing a study abroad. And then I don't probably need to spend too much time on this. I feel like we're definitely in very high visibility when it comes to athletics. Um, our men's and women's basketball team, our perennial powerhouses um, in the NCAA, we're definitely hoping to make a deep run into the NCAA tournament this year. I know the Big East tournament is coming up soon, um, but there are a lot of other activities and opportunities to get involved with sports. Uh, we do have club sports teams you see there, and then we also have intramurals that will be offered from semester to semester. Uh, 700 plus campus organizations and clubs led by Huskies. So again, tons of opportunity to get involved. Um, I think the only way you would find not be able to find something to do is if you're just sitting in your room. There's tons of stuff to get involved in. And then a little bit about our housing on campus. So 99 plus housing options, uh, and they do range from residence halls to suites to apartment styles, um, eight dining units across campus with nine on-campus cafes and three meal plans. 40% of, 48% uh, of our students first year join one of the learning communities. And those can be specific to social interests, academic interests. Um, some of those examples would be Eco House, a Global House, Human Rights House, Nursing House, engineering house um, and so on and so forth. So a lot of opportunities uh, around 65 to 70% uh, year to year of our total student bodies living on campus at stores. 98% uh, of first years live on campus. 
a little bit about academics. Obviously, that's the name of the game in any collegiate setting. Uh, we have lots of opportunities in majors, uh, 115 plus majors, 320 plus minors in concentrations across 10 schools and colleges, which I'll show in a moment. Student faculty ratio is 16 to 1. Most of our classes on campus will be smaller than 30 students. Uh, so similarly to what my colleague said before, there may be some courses that are right at that like line. But most of your courses, and especially for your major, will be under 30 students. Um, some of the most popular academic programs that we have at UConn would be biological sciences and psychological sciences, as probably is to be said at many large institutions like UConn. Um, and then going into some more selective programs. So we are a pretty selective institution. Our, select, our acceptance rate is right around 50%. Um, so we definitely are competitive. The selective programs there on the right are direct entry on the top. Um, so business, nursing, engineering, and fine arts. Um, I feel like I always have to rattle out that we are one of, I think, three campuses in the country that offers a BA in puppetry. So if anyone's interested in puppetry, definitely let me know about that. Um, and special programs. So those are coordinated curriculum uh, for students that know that they want to go on and get a terminal um, degree in law, medicine, dentistry, or education. Uh, so they're coordinated for undergraduates to pick um, one of several majors, and as long as they maintain their academics, they'll be able to enroll in that graduate program. Um, I do feel like I need to say that it is obviously conditional with the students doing the work. Um, so they have to maintain their credentials throughout their four years. And then those junior entry programs there on the bottom right, um, those would be programs where students take gen eds to apply for their junior not going to spend too much time right here, just give you a quick look at the different schools and colleges that we have at the university. Um, most of those are housed on campus. Um, the law school, the social work program are not. And then these are all of our different academic programs and majors. Again, all of this information is definitely on the website. Um, I know I'm almost out of time here, so I want to give you a little bit of information about what is required on the application. Um, we do also complete a holistic review process. We are also test optional. So those are some of our averages um, from this past year. We are test optional through next year. So current juniors will still have that ability to apply test optional if they so choose. And then this is our first year application timeline. Our decisions just dropped last Saturday. Um, so if there are any students that have any questions on the call, I will definitely drop my information in the chat. Um, but I am all out of time. So thank you so much for having me and I hope you have a great night. Wonderful, thank you so much. All right, next up we have the University of Delaware. Hello everyone, how are you all doing tonight? Get started real quick. So welcome to the University of Delaware. My name is Luke Chalmers. I am the under, I'm the undergraduate admissions counselor for Northern Jersey. So hello, let's get started. So, the University of Delaware, we attract, we are located in Newark, Delaware, which is in uh, Northern Delaware, probably about two, two and a half hours uh, south from you all. Uh, so still fairly, fairly close. We attract a lot of students from all over the place. So we attract about students from about 46 different states all from across the country, uh, mainly pulling from the Mid-Atlantic um, Mid uh, area, but nonetheless, all over. Uh, we also pull, have a very uh, good international poll as well too. So we have a very, very uh, vibrant uh, community on campus with all of our um, different groups on campus. Uh, the location is definitely a big part of uh, the attraction of UD. Uh, we, while well, we are right off uh, on the I-95 corridor, so like I was saying for you, for you all, it's about two, two and a half hours from, uh, from Northern Jersey and New York City. Uh, we're under about 40 minutes from Philadelphia, 20 minutes from Wilmington, Delaware, uh, about an hour south uh, north of Baltimore and about two and a half hours uh, north of Washington, D.C. as well, too. And then Delaware itself being a, you know, a small state, if you want to change a pace, you can go down south to Rehoboth or Bethany or Dewey for, you know, a beach uh, for a beach day to kind of change up a little bit. So. The location is definitely nice and prime. And then the big advantages of, you know, coming to Delaware and coming to UD is, you know, Delaware, first and foremost, um, you know, some small things about Delaware, you know, being a sales tax-free school uh, state, you know, it does have its benefits. 
And also our tax laws do a, uh, encourage a lot of different Fortune 500 companies to come and uh, incorporate themselves here in Delaware. So we have a lot of opportunities for those students to be a part and to join these companies as an intern or also future uh, opportunities down the road at the graduation as well too. Uh, like I said before, Delaware is small, super small and accessible to everyone. So it's very easy to get around. And then on camp, when you're on campus, main, our main street cuts right through the heart of campus. So it is a quick five minute walk from really kind of anywhere on campus to get to uh, main street to kind of uh, that kind of college town vibe. We also have a full 100, 150 acre uh, farm in Ecology Woods down on our south campus, which is about a 20 minute walk from our main campus. So for our students who are interested in agriculture or uh, uh, kind of pre-vet those, those kind of tracks, we have a great hands-on experience for you all right on campus. And it is uh, very fun to walk down and try and see the cows and horses in the pasture uh, as you're down there eating uh, at our, our creamery and, walk, and as you're eating the ice cream, seeing the, uh, the milk, seeing the cows that I came from as well too. We have a lot of different opportunities here at UD. We uh, pioneered the concept of study abroad back in 1923. Uh, so we have drastically expanded that to over 100 different, uh, over 100 different uh, programs in 40 different countries. Uh, and a large part of our uh, student body who loves to take advantage of that as well too. We also have a lot of uh, inter, uh, inter, uh, uh, collegiate uh, disciplinaries that interact with a lot of each other, uh, so too. Here at UD, we offer over 150 different majors and 100 different minors, uh, with also a about 50 different uh, four plus one programs. Uh, that is a lot to choose from. Uh, so we also also we do offer um, what's it called uh, university studies or undecided major for students who are you know a little unsure what they're getting or what they want to get into. If you go uh, follow that uh, that URL. Um, you can see our major finder, you can see all of our all of our majors listed out with our one sheets, and you'll be able to see what each you now kind of outcomes that you can expect from each major, what um, the curriculum may look like moving forward to that major as well, too. And kind of that's with all of them. So and then of course, too, you know, with college, you know, it is an investment and you're making that investment in your future, and you want to make sure that. Like uh, that investment pays off at the end at the end of the day. So if you want to go to you know our outcomes page, you'll see oh where kind of all of our different alumni are doing. Kind of our recent graduates, I can say that ninety three percent of our recent graduates from the class of twenty eighteen through twenty twenty are employed uh, or pursuing uh, further education six up uh, to six months after graduation, and we're always consistently ranked uh, amongst the top public universities in the country according to U.S. News and World Reports. So. If you're looking for a good, um, you know, value for your, for your money, UD is your place to come as well too, with all different opportunities that you can come and uh, participate in. So for applicate for applications, we are on both on the uh, we're on the Common App and the Coalition application. So whichever ones you prefer, you can do that. We ask you that you uh, complete the required essays and that you create and uh, connect a self-reported academic record or essay. SRAR to it. We use this to, um, to uh, you know, unify all of the different uh, rating scales that all different high schools use. Uh, we also, if you have taken the SAT or ACT, you can self-report your scores on that on that as well too. But that again, we are test optional uh, moving forward as well next year. And also, we then ask you to submit a college counselor letter uh, of recommendation or a secondary school report as well too. Uh, also, if you're interested in, uh, in applying to Orange College, all you just need to do is check a bot and you're good to go for that as well, too. So um, I also looked at my out of time. So if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I'll put my contact information in the chat um, and come visit us as well, too. We do have uh, some open houses coming up for our admitted students, as well as we're also open, always open for uh, daily tours as well, too. So thank you very much and have a nice night. Awesome. Thank you. All right. At this point, I'd like to invite all the presenters back on screen with us. We're going to ask um, probably get through one question here just to hear from everybody one more time. 
So what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And I'm going to go in the same order that you presented. So University of Vermont, uh, go right ahead. All right, thanks. Um, I always like to give the advice, like, um, or just kind of maybe the icebreaker that like admissions counselors, we're, we're people, we are here to help you. That is our job. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, I would say like, we're not admissions robots, just being like, accept, deny, accept, deny. So like, please come uh, reach out to us. We are here to help and be kind of your link to the universities that you're exploring. Awesome, thank you. University of Rhode Island, what is your advice? Uh, so my bit of advice would be to uh, go visit your schools. Um, you know, you're not going to, you know, buy an outfit without trying it, or I guess these days you would, but you might return it. Um, but you don't want to do that with college. So definitely go visit. We all have plenty of opportunities to visit, you know, now starting maybe your April break into the summer if you're a junior and then obviously senior year. So the short and sweet, go visit, check it out, see what it's like and see if you can see yourself there for four years or more. Thank you. Rowan University, what is your advice? Um, I would say the main thing that I try and inform students is to check your university like status page. So once you apply through Common App or whatever application, um, you do get access to a status page where it's anything that you need in regarding like to your application. So status decision like or app decision, appointments you can make on hours. Um, financial aid stuff, like everything. So make sure you do get comfortable with that page so that you have a smooth and easy transition from high school to college. Thank you. Montclair State University, what's your advice? Um, my advice would be when you're looking at colleges, please don't forget to look at, you know, cost. Uh, tuition and fees is one thing, but you want to know how much it is going to cost for you to live there. You know, financial aid is important. So once you get that figured out, try to maybe make an Excel sheet, break it all down. You do not want to be shocked about the cost or like the bill. A lot of the times I do have students reaching out being like, oh, I didn't even look at it. And, and sometimes they just want to deposit without having any info. So please make sure you actually pay attention to, you know, the cost of where you plan to attend. Awesome. Thank you. University of Connecticut had to jump off early, so I'm going to push it on to the University of Delaware next. What is your advice? Uh, my advice is going to be, you know, everyone, every, what everyone else has said so far is going to be while you're like, visiting your uh, these universities, take advantage of the fact that, you know, all the staff is there, and especially to uh, if you're taking a tour with, you know, tour guides with student tour guides ask them about their um what they're do what they're doing about their experiences they're the current students we can give you all of the you know data and numbers and all that stuff that's also important to your you know decision but at the end of the day to you're coming to here to live here and to have an experience and you know who else is better than the students who are living that experience awesome thank you so much thank you everyone for your responses all right, I am going to wrap things up for us here very quickly. Okay, so a big thank you to our participants for joining us this evening and our presenta presenters uh, for putting all the information together and uh, spending your evening here with us. Uh, when you close the window, there'll be a quick uh, five question survey. Uh, if you don't mind, any feedback you can provide would be greatly appreciated. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. There is one more after this. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other recordings at strivescan.com slash Edison. Thanks so much and have a great evening. Bye-bye.